being an influencer is a real job, and for many of us, it's a full-time job. More and more brands are seeing and recognizing the value of content creators, but a ton of brands still just don't get it and try to take advantage of influencers, especially brand new influencers. In today's video, I wanna talk about knowing your worth as a content creator. I wanna talk about standing up for yourself, being confident, and also, most importantly, knowing when to walk away. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Austin and I am a fashion and beauty content creator based in New York City. If you're new around here and are just stumbling across my channel for the first time today, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Just hit the red button down below to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to turn on your notifications so that you never miss a video from me. Now, I wanna take you guys back in time for a second to 2013 and tell you about the first brand collaboration I ever did. I started my blog in 2012, and when a brand reached out to me in 2013, I was totally shocked. I didn't think anyone other than my mom was reading my blog, and at that time, only friends and family that I knew of were following me on Instagram, so this felt like the biggest deal in the world. A very cool online vintage shop reached out to me and offered me, wait for it, 10% off of my order, if I ordered an item from the store and then did a blog post about it, and I was over the moon. <laughs> and so how did I go from getting 10% off of an item in exchange for a blog post to landing four-figure brand deals as a micro-influencer, someone with just under 12,000 Instagram followers, just over 5,000 YouTube subscribers? Well, that's what I really wanna get into today. I wanna walk you through a few practical tips and strategies and also a few just mindset things and things that helped me be taken seriously by these brands that were reaching out to me. So let's start off with just positioning yourself as a professional and looking at yourself as a business owner and an entrepreneur because that's what you are if you're creating content. The first time that I really looked at my blog as a business was when I got laid off from my role as a magazine editor in 2019 and decided to pursue freelancing and content creation while I was looking for other full-time jobs. And I ended up staying as a freelancer for a year and a half and that was the first time that I ended up making five figures from my blog. That was a little bit of an extreme situation because I had no choice but to take it seriously because it was something that was bringing me in a little bit of money that I felt like I could scale and grow. But even just doing things like setting up my hello at austintosone.com email address and you know changing my Instagram handle from like the fun catchy name it was to my name and getting professional headshots and things like that that really just made it feel like a business and if you don't have money to spend on those things right now then think about it even just more in the sense of treating yourself and every email that you get like a business owner and thinking how would I approach this is this a good business decision is this something that will help me grow, will further a relationship with someone, or will help me pay my bills at the end of the day too. In one of my recent videos, I did a deep, deep dive on gifted collaborations and whether or not influencers and content creators should ever work for free. So go ahead and check out that video, um, add it to your watch later playlist to watch when you're done with this one if you want my full thoughts on gifted collaborations. But I just want to have everyone get comfortable with the idea of asking brands to pay them for their work. It sounds really simple, but it can certainly be a little intimidating, especially if you're a new creator. So if you get an email or an Instagram DM from a brand that maybe wants to send you an item or offer you some sort of affiliate marketing relationship or just try to start to work with you in some way where it doesn't really feel like they are talking about paying you money <laughs> to create your content, then here's what you can do. If I get an email from a brand and it seems like they want me to post in exchange for product or sign up for some kind of affiliate program where I'm not actually getting paid for the content creation, I typically write back to them and say something along the lines of, hey, thank you so much for reaching out and thinking of me. If I love the brand or I know the products, I'll mention that in the email and then say, currently I'm not able to accept any unpaid or gifted collaborations. Um, here is my rate for a Instagram post if that's what you were asking for. And please note that this does not include usage or exclusivity, which we'll talk about in a minute in this video. Um, but I would love to find a way to work together if you guys have the budget. And I think this is what 
really scares a lot of creators is the thought of even sending that email in the first place, which I can totally relate to. But I just wanted to say that there are only ever three possible outcomes from sending that email. So the only three outcomes to sending that rate are they'll say yes, they'll say no, or they'll try to negotiate. And all three are okay. And I think that the biggest thing is knowing when it's okay to walk away. Like you can tell if a brand is trying to take advantage of you, if they are just calling you dear or by your Instagram handle, or they aren't really using super sophisticated language, or they're not treating it like a business too. Like there's a lot of different ways you can tell. You'll usually just have a gut feeling if a brand is not serious about their partnership or not treating you with respect and trying to make it a collaboration that works for both sides. That the actual definition of a collaboration is you and the brand both need to be comfortable with the terms that you're agreeing to and it needs to be mutually beneficial for both parties. And I am the first to admit it can be hard to walk away in some cases. I've recently turned down a few four-figure brand collaborations myself because they still just weren't worth it to me. And if you're a full-time content creator and you're still small and you know you probably got like a handful of brands reaching out to you each month but maybe it's not a ton or maybe they don't totally align with you like is the case with me I have to have other income streams and other revenue sources outside of brand deals to make a living as a content creator and I talk about some of my passive revenue income strategies in this video here. If you are a creator who is doing this as a side hustle and you have a full-time income outside of this it's probably a lot easier to say no at least at first and it's really worth it to wait for the brands who are going to appreciate you and compensate you fairly for your time and expertise and the high quality content that you create for them. Just know that there is so much more value in keeping your standards high with the brands you choose to partner with, whether that means it's a brand that you love or a brand that might be new to you but treats you with a ton of respect. So on the note of being able to walk away and say no, the next thing I wanted to mention is knowing what not to agree to. And I specifically want to talk about some terms that brands like to put in contracts that I think frankly a lot of influencers just don't read. If you take anything away from this video, please just let it be to read your contracts. Read them. If there's something you don't understand, circle it, like actually print it out and redline it so that you know what you're looking at and you make sure that you're not agreeing to something that they, you should be getting paid a lot more money for. So the two big words that I would suggest looking out for in contracts are usage rights and exclusivity. By giving a brand usage rights, you give them permission to use it in paid marketing materials. So that could be paid sponsored social media posts, if you've ever seen those on your Instagram feed, that could be in their email marketing campaigns, that could be in Facebook ads or Google ads or anything where they might be using your image or likeness to sell their product. So keep an eye out for that word and if you see the word in perpetuity, run for the hills, never agree to that. Um, I would recommend using usage rights in blocks of three, six, or 12 months of usage. I really don't recommend going beyond a year of usage for a brand just because you never know what's going to happen with that brand. It could get bought by a company you hate, it could get canceled because it did something shady. Even if it's your favorite brand, cap the usage at a year if possible. And then the other thing to watch out for is exclusivity. And exclusivity means that a brand doesn't want you to work with certain competitors of theirs for a certain amount of time. But I would say anything beyond seven days, especially for my two main categories that I post about, fashion and beauty, I'm definitely going to charge for because I want to be able to work with other beauty brands, I want to be able to work with other fashion brands, and they might reach out to me and ask to work together, but if I have an exclusivity agreement with a different brand, then I can't say yes to this brand, depending on if they've specifically outlined their competitors. For example, if you just were working with Walmart, they probably don't want you to work with Target for, I don't know, a month or so in between. Um, or they might just list similar things. So if you are working with Chipotle and they don't want you to work with any other fast casual restaurants, um, try to get them to define who they don't want you to work with whenever possible because you might not think 
I don't know, Panera is fast casual and then Panera might reach out to you and you don't wanna get yourself in trouble. So whenever possible for exclusivity, always try to figure out who exactly they don't want you partnering with and for how long. In terms of calculating a rate for those two, unfortunately it's hard to give me a ballpark because it depends so much on how big their brand is, your audience, the term, the time period, and all of that different stuff. But what I can tell you is most creators I know will either do a percentage of their posting rate, so they might take anywhere between like 20 and 50% of what they would charge to post and apply that as an additional rate to cover the usage, or they will just have their own set usage rates for three, six, and 12 months so that if a brand asks, they know how to send it off and what they want to ask for. So I hope that's a little bit helpful in terms of identifying a pricing tier. Have any of you guys watching ever negotiated with a brand? I would honestly love to hear from you in the comments down below. I think it always helps us to learn and hear from each other. So if you have any best tips or tricks for negotiating brand deals, leave them in the comments. The next thing I want to talk about in terms of knowing your worth is when to raise your prices. And this could be your price for content creation or even your own products and services that you offer. And I was thinking about this the other day because I recently raised the price for my ebook. I've had my ebook right on pitch for two years where I teach you how to pitch brands and collaborations and all of that good stuff. And I had been charging, I actually doubled the price. I had been charging $9 and I raised the price to 18. And here are some things that I did before I raised the price. First, I asked myself if I've acquired more knowledge since I last released it. And since I released it two years ago, the answer is yes. In the last two years, I've learned a lot more about pitching brands. The next was going and looking at my competition and seeing what they were charging for similar products. And a quick search revealed that I was definitely on the lower tier of pricing for similar products. Another thing to think about is if people are asking you for a discount, and this applies a bit more to products than for services like content creation, but I've only had one person in two years ever ask me for a discount. and. It's actually normal in business to get a little bit of pushback on your pricing. So if people are just buying it without any question, you might want to think about, is this like too low in terms of pricing? Another big question is, does your pricing align with your income goals? And I think that this one is the one that should be taken most with a grain of salt because at the end of the day, if you want to make $100,000, you can't just charge $100,000 for an Instagram post if you're like, me at least. Um, so I think you need to think about this realistically and reasonably. And I left my full-time job in April to pursue content creation full-time. So the fact that I already get some passive sales from my ebook each month, as I do mention it in my YouTube videos and blog posts and have lots of you guys ask me questions about it, um, it revealed that you know I was making sales each month, but the way to make more sales was either to come out with new digital products, which I have also and to potentially raise the price of my ebook and that brought me to the last thing I asked myself which was can I improve this product can I make it better based on what I've picked up what my peers are charging and what I've learned over time and the answer was hell yes I can so I just re-released my ebook it is double the size it has so much updated information it's a lot easier to read as well i've never claimed to be the best graphic designer but i've learned a lot over two years um, of just like creating different graphics for things and it's much more legible now it makes a lot of sense and i totally stand behind my new pricing and feel great about it and another way to think about raising your prices is if you are a content creator and you're in a busy season for you in particular, there's going to be a higher demand to work with creators just like you. So if you are a mom, you just had back to school coming up, you can charge more for something like that. We're heading into Q4 right now, which is the holiday season, and some brands save up to 40% of their marketing budgets for just this quarter. So you should be charging more during the holidays because more brands want to work with content creators. And I also think it's worth thinking about if you are a minority or you have a brand reach out to you to promote a certain holiday, you know, maybe that's Gay Pride, maybe it's Black History Month, things like that, 
to adjust your prices accordingly during those seasons as well. So I think that just about wraps up everything I really wanted to cover in this video. I really hope this helped you guys out and if you have any other questions about knowing your worth as a creator, as an influencer, please leave them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. I love reading all of your comments on my videos. It makes me so happy and it's why I love doing this. As I mentioned earlier, please don't forget to subscribe and stick around if this is your first time clicking onto my channel. Hopefully you enjoyed the content and want to see more like that full tutorial of how to make a media kit in Canva that I'm working on. So hit the red button down below so you get notified about that and any of my upcoming videos. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up down below if you learned something or if this video inspired you or motivated you in any way. That really helps my channel out and tells me what kind of content you guys are enjoying. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!